AAC Universe and welcome to History Of. I'm your host and resident superhero nerd Aaron Waller and in this series we do a deep dive of various comic book characters, both heroes and villains, and provide you some insight on who they are and why they do what they do. And in today's episode we are talking about the time traveling supervillain that's been on the tongues of many Marvel fans thanks to his appearance in the season 1 finale of Loki as well as his upcoming appearance as the main bad guy in Ant-Man 3, also known as Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, and that villain is known as Kang the Conqueror. But before we get started I want to remind you to check out AnimatedApparelCompany.com for all your awesome nerdy merch from Marvel, DC, Star Wars, video games, anime, and so much more. And you can even use my special promo code Aaron20 to get 20% off your order, get 20% off of everything in your cart, add some more stuff, and save some more money. So now that we paid those bills, let's go ahead and get right into it and talk about King the Conqueror. King the Conqueror was created by Marvel legends Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and first appeared in the Avengers number 8 in 1964, where he would come to rule the Earth and eventually be defeated and sent back to his own time. But King has an even earlier appearance, just not as King the Conqueror, but rather as Rama Tut, a time traveler stuck in ancient Egypt in 1963's Fantastic Four number 19. But it wouldn't be until the following year in Fantastic Four Annual number 2 that Rama Tut would run into Doctor Doom where he would get the inspiration to become Kang the Conqueror. And by now you're probably asking yourself, wow, this character can time travel, he must be pretty powerful. What exactly are his powers and abilities? Well, Kang the Conqueror doesn't technically have any powers or abilities. Not natural ones anyway. Kang is listed as having indomitable will, super genius level intellect, and he's a master strategist. But on top of that, he's learned how to use a time device and the advanced technology of his future. By using this technique, he was able to create battle armor that simulated superpowers such as enhanced strength, durability, concussive bolts, and allow him to travel through time to name a few things. But he also typically has what's called the Light of Century Sphere, which I was sure Kang was holding as he appeared out of the elevator in Loki, which only turned out to be an apple. But the Light of the Century Sphere allows him to transport people through space and time or hold them captive. In terms of weaponry, Kang has a variety of weapons, ranging from shooting energy beams, creating holograms, and controlling technology. He can even expertly command warriors from all periods of time, human and non alike, to do his bidding for him. But if he wants to get his hands dirty, Kang is a master of armed and unarmed combat. He even went up against Captain America and the entire army of Immortus. Kang is fearless in all aspects and will stop at nothing to see his goals realized. Clearly Kang the Conqueror is a handful, but he's had quite the checkered past in history. So let's go ahead and take a look at Kang's evolution. Now keep in mind that it is extremely messy and hard to keep track of a lot of different things, but here's some of the highlights for you. Before he became Kang the Conqueror, he was known as Nathaniel Richard possible relative of Fantastic Four's Reed Richards. I say possible because Reed Richards' father, also named Nathaniel, time traveled with the technology developed by Victor Von Doom, who could also be Nathaniel's relative. If you ask me, this sounds like a job for Maury. Anyway, Nathaniel, the King Nathaniel, is a 30th century scholar from an alternate timeline of Earth, more specifically Earth 6311, a universe where humanity never went into the Dark Ages. After being bullied as a child, he was hospitalized, and while recovering, he turned to science and his ancestors' history on the hero age of Earth 616, better known as the main Earth timeline of the Marvel Universe. He would long to venture to a time of triumph and pride. At 25, he would discover his ancestors' fortress and time machine. And after having encounters with the Fantastic Four attempting to stop his future self, Nathaniel would travel back to ancient Egypt in a ship shaped like a sphinx and be stuck, thus the earlier reference to Rama Tut. And it's here that he would have a very conflict-driven time, fighting with gods and even trying to kill the Egyptian Anabansur, who would eventually become Apocalypse. Down the line, he would fall in love with Princess Ravana Renslayer and want to marry her. Now, if this name sounds familiar, it's because Ravana Renslayer is also in Loki. She was the judge and head of a lot of the TVA operations. But back to the comics, she rejects him and he tries to impress her by kidnapping the Avengers. Kang is still rejected and set to be executed by his own commanders. He then recruits the Avengers he kidnapped to help defeat his commanders. Unfortunately, Ravana Renslayer is struck during the battle when trying to protect Kang and she dies. Kang then does the most logical thing and puts Ravana in a stasis to keep her alive, very much in the style of Mr. Freeze. He will later make a bet with a character named the Grand Master that he uses the Avengers to gain power of reviving Princess Renslayer. This bet was to have the power over life and death, which he only sort of wins after some technicalities, and then he just ends up deciding to try and kill the Avengers rather than save his love. Later during his history, during the Infinity War comic, Kang would team up with Doctor Doom to steal cosmic cues from Magus, Adam Warlock's evil future self. That would have been really hard to explain in Avengers Infinity War, especially considering most of these characters don't exist in terms of the Marvel Cinematic Universe yet. But now bringing it back around full circle to his live action appearance in Loki, he was underwhelming to some fans as he was not as intimidating as we thought he would be. I know Joey was a bit disappointed during our watch party. 
I didn't, I was like, I'm not really feeling this. But this is the beauty of Marvel and the story they're telling. Kang is only a variant or one of many of himself, and he is the one holding the others back. This means the Kang that we saw in Loki is nowhere near the final form of Kang. I expect we'll see a more ruthless Kang return possibly in Loki, but definitely in Ant-Man 3, but also part of the larger MCU thanks to the new multiverse. So his first appearance may not have been too crazy, but remember this is only the beginning. There's a vast mystery to Kang, not only because of his role in the Marvel Universe, but also because he can literally time travel. So those are some of the major points of things you need to know about Kang the Conqueror moving forward in not only the MCU, but his past in the Marvel comics and what we may be able to see in the future. But now I want to hear from you. Did you learn anything new about Kang the Conqueror you may not have otherwise known or something you may be looking forward to in his future? Let me know as well as what other characters you may want to see in this series down in the comment section down below. And also while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos from me or the rest of the AAC team, whether we're going live or pumping out daily content. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I hope to see you in the next video.